Mr. Speaker, the Ghanaian people give thanks to Almighty God for the blessings, favor, and grace he continues to bestow on them. Exactly a month ago, that is 7th December last year, 2016, we, the people of Ghana, in all serenity and dignity, exercised our democratic franchise freely to elect a president and parliament of our republic. We are met here today to give effect to the outcome of that exercise. In accordance with our Republican custom, I, having been declared the winner of the presidential contest on 9th December 2016 by the returning officer, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Charlotte Osei, have taken the oath of the high office of President of the Republic in the presence of the newly sworn Vice President, His Excellency Al Haji Dr. Muhammadu Baumia, and the newly elected Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honorable Professor Michael Aaron Okwe. And now, an oath administered by the Chief Justice, Her Ladyship. Georgina Theodora Wood. Before the elected representatives of the people assembled in this seventh parliament of the Fourth Republic, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our nation is honored by the presence at this solemn ceremony of investiture of leaders and representatives of friendly countries across the globe. In particular, those of the sister nations of our regional body, the economic community of West African states ECOWAS, and of our continental body, the African Union. I salute the chairperson of the authority of heads of state and government of the AU, His Excellency Idris Deby, President of the Republic of Chad. I salute the chairperson of the authority of heads of state and government of ECOWAS, the historic figure her Excellency Ellen Johnson Sally, President of the Republic of Liberia. Our special guest of honor, His Excellency Alassan Jamani Watara, President of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire. His Excellency Mohamedou Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of mighty Nigeria. His Excellency Maki Saar, President of the Republic of Senegal. His Excellency Faw Nyasimbe, President of the Republic of Togo. His Excellency Professor Alpha Conde, President of the Republic of Guinea Conakry. His Excellency Patrice Talon, President of the Republic of Benin. His Excellency Ernest Bai Koroma, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone. His Excellency Ibrahim Bubakar Keita, President of the Republic of Mali. His Excellency Rochmark Christian Kabori, President of Burkina Faso. We are grateful also 
for the presence of His Excellency, Denise Sasso Ingueso, President of the Republic of Congo, His Excellency Theodora Obiang Ibuema, President of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea, His Excellency Ali Bongo, President of the Republic of Gabon, and His Excellency Edgar Lungu, President of the Republic of Zambia. To them, and the representatives of all the other friendly nations who are here, and former presidents and leaders, I say Akwaba, our famous word of welcome. I have at the outset to thank sincerely our departing president, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, for his service to our nation. He stepped into the breach of national leadership at a delicate moment in the country's history, with the death in office for the first time of a sitting president, the late Professor John Evans Atta Mills. May his soul rest in peace. He has since steered the, state, the ship of state with conviction. His elegant, dignified acceptance of the verdict of the people on 7 December 2016 will without doubt receive the approval of history, for it has contributed significantly to the process of democratic consolidation in Ghana. I wish him and his family well. For myself, I'm in the new, unique position of being able to draw on the wisdom and experience of three former presidents of the Republic, their excellences, Jerry John Rawlings, John Ajakum Kufour, and John Dramani Mahama. They represent the continuity of the institutions of our Republic, for which we thank God. Mr. Speaker, I am deeply humbled by the exceptional mandate and extraordinary show of confidence that the Ghanaian people have conferred on my party, the new patriotic party, and on my modest person. I am determined to do all in my power to accomplish the tasks of the mandate and justify their confidence. I will not let you, the people of Ghana, down. We have a proud heritage. We are the heirs of John Mensah Saba, Joseph Casely Hayford, George Parr Grant, R.S. Blay, Joseph Wachi Dankwa, Emmanuel Obeta Bilanti, Edward Akufuado, William Oforiata, Kobna Kessis, Ernest Akwaje, Kwame Nkrumah, Komla Adbeli Bedama, Kojo Botsio, S.D. Domo, Kofi Abrefa Buzia, Bafo Osei Akoto, and others, who taught us that fidelity to principles, courage, patience, resilience, and collective action do yield results. They fought with intelligence, guts, steely determination, and patriotism to liberate our land and reclaim our worth as human beings. Their love for country continues to inspire generations of us to commit our lives to the search for an enduring democratic legacy for Ghana. It is not for nothing that when our forebears established the Ghanaian nation, they chose freedom and justice as our motto. Our generation has to give meaning to this motto. On March 6, in a few weeks' time, Ghana will attain 60 years 
as an independent nation. I suspect that those early nationals would be disappointed if they came today and saw the level of development we have achieved in 60 years of independence. Our journey has had some highs and unfortunately many lows. Since we accepted a consensus on how we should be governed with the onset of the Fourth Republic, we have performed more creditably. It is within this period of 24 years that Ghana has witnessed a consistent period of development. Sixty years after Mason, we no longer have any excuses for being poor. I stand here today, humbled beyond measure, for the opportunity to leave this country at this time and take us to a higher level of development. The words of J.B. Dankwa, one of the founding fathers of the Ghanaian nation, are compelling. He said as far back as 1960 that the duty of government should be and I quote, to liberate the energies of the people from the growth of a property-owning democracy in this land with right to life, freedom, and justice as the principles to which the government and the laws of the land should be dedicated in order specifically to enrich life, property, and liberty of each and every citizen, unquote. We have an exuberant and young, growing population that wants the best of what the world has to offer and will not settle for third world or developing world standards. We have an adventurous people who are in a hurry for success. I have no doubt that the talents, energies, sense of enterprise, and innovation of the Ghanaian can be harnessed to make Ghana the place where dreams come true. It took us a while, but the consensus on multi-party constitutional rule has been established. And for the third time, we've had a peaceful transfer of power from a governing party to an opposition one. We have done it without any fuss, and it is now part of what we do as a people. Kofi Abrefa Busia, Prime Minister of the Progress Party Government of the Second Republic, and one of the great Ghanaians, said in these eloquent words, and I quote, we regard politics as an avenue of service to our fellow men. We hold that political power is to be exercised to make life nobler and happier. Our success or failure should be judged by the quality of the individual, by his knowledge, by his skill, by his behavior as a member of society, the standard of living he's able to enjoy, and by the degree of harmony and brotherliness in our community life as a nation." Unquote. We should move on to deepen our democracy. It is time to make sure that we have a true separation of powers between the various arms of government. Our parliament, the legislative arm of government, must grow into its proper role as an effective machinery for accountability and oversight of the executive and not be its junior partner. The Ghanaian Parliament, the Ghanaian Member of Parliament, must stand out as institutions that represent all that we hold dear and citizens can take pride in. Our judiciary must inspire confidence in the citizens so we can all see the courts as the ultimate arbiters when disputes arise as they would. A Ghanaian judge must be a reassuring presence. 
and the epitome of fairness. We have worked with our national constitution for 24 years, and we know the areas that require change. I believe a consensus has emerged that we must decentralize more. We must devolve more power with corresponding resources to the base of our political system and to our people in the regions and communities. We must trust the collective and individual wisdom and good sense of our people. <coughs> we must restore integrity in public life. State coffers are not spoiled for the party that wins an election but resources for the country's social and economic development. I shall protect the public purse by insisting on value for money in all transactions. Public service is just that, service and not an avenue for making money. Money is to be made in the private sector, not the public, and measures will be put in place to ensure this. Please excuse me, I have a bad cough. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> we must create wealth and restore happiness to our nation. We can only do this when we have an educated and skilled population that is capable of competing in the global economy. We must expand our horizons and embrace science and technology as critical tools for our development. We believe that the business of government is to govern. Ours is to set fair rules. We will provide vision and direction and shine the light down the path of our entrepreneurs and farmers. We are indeed counting on a vibrant private sector to drive growth and create jobs. <coughs> we will stimulate the creative juices of innovators. We will bring to life the adventurer in you. It is time to imagine and to dream again. Time to try that business idea again. We will reduce taxes to recover the momentum of our economy. The doors of Ghana are open again. The shutters are up again. There could not be a better opportunity to make in Ghana and to make it in Ghana. Ghana is open for business again. <coughs> We will build a confident Ghana, which is united, at peace with itself, and takes pride in its diversity. We will rekindle the spirit that made Ghana the leading light on the African continent, and make our conditions deserving of that accolade. We will work with our neighbors and friends on the continent to enhance peace, democracy, and political stability in our parts of the world. We will reassert vigorously the Pan-African vocation to which our nation has been dedicated. Integration of our region and of our continent will be a strategic objective of Ghanaian policy. It will not be easy. We have no illusions whatsoever about the enormity of the task that we face. But I know that Ghanaians at home and abroad will rise to the occasion. They always do. It will require sacrifice, but it can be done. Others have done it. So can we. Our best days still lie ahead. Though our challenges are fearsome, so are our strengths. Ghanaians have ever been a restless, questing, hopeful people, and we must bring to our task today the vision and will 
of those who came before us. The Ghanaian people have summoned the change we celebrate today. They have raised their voices in an unmistakable chorus. They have cast their votes without equivocation and have forced the change. Now we must do the work the season demands. <coughs> to that work, I now turn with the, all the authority of my office. I ask the legislature and judiciary to join with me, but no president, no parliament, no government can undertake this mission all by itself. Fellow citizens, you must be at the center of the change. The change we have voted for will have to start with each of us as individuals. We can start with little changes in our own individual attitudes and practices. The change can and should start now and with us as individuals. I ask you to be citizens Citizens, not spectators. Citizens, not subjects. Responsible citizens, building your communities and our nation. Let us work until the work is done. Holy Scripture in Galatians, chapter 6, 9 says, and I quote, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I assure you, my fellow citizens, who have entrusted me with this mandate, that I will advance my convictions with civility. I will serve the public interest with courage. I will speak for greater justice as well as compassion. And I will comp call for responsibility. And I will live it as well. This is my solemn pledge. I see exciting times ahead. The rule of law will be the underlying tenet of our lives, and the law will be applicable to all of us, and not just some. We will have to work hard, harder than we have ever done before, and the hard work will be done by all of us, and not just some. There will be discipline in all sectors of our lives, and this applies to all of us, not just some. Our public service will be accorded the dignity and respect it deserves and be made to attract the young, bright young people it needs. We acknowledge there will always be the need for a safety net for the vulnerable in our society, as in all other societies. Our nation will work when the marginalized and vulnerable are catered for and treated with respect. Our elderly people will be recognized for their roles in building Ghana and have shown of care in the dusk of their lives. We should all recognize the danger we face by the alarming degradation of our environment and work to protect our water bodies, our forests, our lands, and the oceans. We should learn and accept that we do not own the land, but hold it in trust for generations yet unborn, and therefore have a responsibility to take good care of it and all it contains. Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkrumah, or Sajifu, set at the end of 1957, the year of our independence, and I quote, we shall measure our progress by the happiness which our people take in being able to manage their own affairs. Since March 6, 1957, we all say as a matter of routine that we are Ghanaians. It is time to define what being a Ghanaian ought to mean. Being a Ghanaian must stand for something more than the holder of a birth certificate or a certain passport. Being a Ghanaian must put certain responsibilities on each of us.
calling a, yourself a Ghanaian must mean you have signed up to a certain definable code of conduct. Being a Ghanaian puts an obligation on each one of us to work at building a fair, prosperous, and happy nation. And calling yourself a Ghanaian must mean we look out for each other. There should be no higher praise than to be able to say, I am a Ghanaian. I thank the Almighty that I'm able to say with pride, I am a Ghanaian. A new dawn has arisen in Ghana, which will enable us to build a new Ghanaian civilization, which will be the beacon of Africa and the wonder of the world. I thank you all, my fellow citizens, for making me the president of this beautiful country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and may God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong, and may God bless us all, and Mother Ghana, Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. Ladies and gentlemen, please still be reminded this is a chamber of parliament. And the speaker, the right honorable Professor Mike Aaron Okwe presides. members order on behalf of the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana Mr. President may I congratulate you for the address of excellence that you have delivered unto us. We are inspired and most grateful. Thank you. Honorable members, may I acknowledge further the presence of other dignitaries here with us today. His Excellency, B. 
Dr. Mohammed Madari, Vice President of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Anamol Lachmi Nalabu, Foreign Minister of Mauritius. His Excellency, Mr. Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations. His Excellency, former Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency, Pa Kwesi Emisa Atta, Excellency, Ma Christian Kabore, President of Burkina Faso. Excellency Faustine Akage Jodera, President of the Central African Republic. On behalf of this honorable house, I shall invite the chairperson of the Heads of State of ECOWAS and President of the Republic of Liberia, Her Excellency Ellen Johnson Salif to deliver a goodwill message on behalf of ECOWAS. Your Excellency, President Idris Deby, Chairman of the African Union, Mr. Speaker, and Honorable Parliamentarians, Excellencies, Heads of State and Governments here seated, Your Excellency, President of the ECOWAS Commission, your Honor, Madam Chief Justice and Associate Justices, Cabinet Ministers, members of the Diplomatic Corps, officials of government, Your Excellency, former President John Mahama, Your Excellency, former Vice President of Ghana, traditional chiefs and elders, members of the prelate, members of the fourth estate, Distinguished ECOWAS citizens of the Great Republic of Ghana, honorable ladies and gentlemen, I bring you warmest greetings from the people of the Republic of Liberia. It is with great pleasure that I stand here today on behalf of the economic community of West African states to convey very warm and fraternal congratulations to the people of Ghana for once again making the region proud. Today marks a historic day in the ECOWAS community and Africa as a whole as we witness another democratic transition in the Republic of Ghana. Today, we witness the completion of a democratic process of peaceful transfer of power from one administration to another. 
You Ghanaians make us proud. After hard-fought campaigns, you have put differences aside and come together as one people to celebrate this victory. We must remember that this event is the fruit of many, many years of hard labor. Democracy is the fruit of the sacrifice of many generations and must not be taken for granted. Thank you, people of Ghana, for your political maturity and sense of patriotism in reaching thus far. We commend the professionalism and commitment of the Independent Electoral Commission and all political parties for applying the needed restraint that paved the way for the peaceful conduct of the elections. The peaceful transition of power in accordance with the will of the people is a sacrosanct pillar of democracy where the people are free to speak, free to move, and free to choose their destiny, there will always be peace. Where there is peace, every child gets a chance to grow to his or her potential in an environment of tranquility. On behalf of ECOWAS heads of state and in my own name, we extend our greatest salutation to His Excellency John Tramani Mahama for his leadership in organizing a free, fair, and transparent electoral process, giving the people the freedom and the space to choose their own fate is the greatest act of leadership. We are proud of Ghana today. We are proud of Ghana today, but that is not unexpected. Ghana has been the bastion of democracy for many decades after years of turbulence. John, as you leave State House, please remember and cherish the fact that you have many roles to play in the future, in Ghana, in Africa, and the world. We all need your creativity and talents. I am thankful for the cordial relationship that developed between our two countries in finding solutions to the burning problems of our nations and our sub-region. Thank you for demonstrating to all that indeed there is life after the pinnacle of power. I look forward to joining you in that track when I turn over to a, ministry, to a new administration in a year from now. <laughs> Excellencies, heads of state, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when ECOWAS was founded about 40 years ago, every one of the 16 countries, with very few exceptions, was under military rule or one-party system. Today, we can say that ECOWAS as a region is the lead in democratic transition. The majority of our leaders today reach power through the democratic process. We must ensure that there is no rollback. We must make sure that this social dispensation is never lost, for we cannot afford to go back to the days of military coup and social unrest. We are therefore confident that our region is transitioning to a stable and mature democratic culture, as demonstrated by the peaceful elections and smooth transitions of power in Cabo Verde, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, Benin, Niger, and now again, Ghana. As a region, ECOWAS has made great strides toward integration with one passport, a court, a parliament, and other institutions. This makes us the most integrated community at the regional level. We still face serious challenges when it comes to the free movement of people who travel by road because they cannot afford air transport. We must ensure that ECOWAS will be truly borderless and that a truck going from Lagos can reach Dakar without harassment and administrative bottlenecks that constrain trade among our countries. Total integration will only be possible when people can move, live, and work freely in any part of ECOWAS. This is a priority of our region as we work for the transformation on the ECOWAS Vision 2020 
and the evolution from ECOWAS of states to ECOWAS of people. While recognizing the relevance of all these programs, we are particularly concerned about the political upheavals within our communities, which may have implications for sustainable peace and economic development. All members of ECOWAS are concerned for the increasing incidence of terrorism as intensified in Mali and Burkina Faso. We are encouraged by the recent victory of the Nigerian government in the effort to remove the Boko Haram scourge. ECOWAS faces perhaps the most difficult situation in the Gambia. After accepting his loss in elections, President Chame reversed course and questioned the results of the elections. He has submitted his grievances to the Supreme Court, which will start its review process on January 10. ECOWAS is closely following the process, and the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, is leading the effort as ECOWAS mediator. We call on the people of the Gambia to follow the example of Ghana and put the interests of the nation above all personal interests. ECOWAS stands by the people of the Gambia and will exercise every effort to sustain peace and democracy. We stand with the people of Gambia and want to assure them of our unwavering adherence to the principles of democracy in our entire region. To you, Excellency, President Nana Ado Akufa Ado, we applaud your long-term work and commitment to peace and democracy. We have no doubt that you will strengthen those ideals and will continue the political actions that have made Ghana a great nation and an example for all of us. We warmly welcome you into the authority of ECOWAS heads of state and government and look forward to the experience and contribution that you will bring to our debates in efforts to integrate our countries further, economically, socially, and politically. Actors may change from time to time, but the spirit of unity, peace, and solidarity of ECOWAS remains always alive. Mr. President, you have assumed the leadership of this great country at a very difficult time when the world is experiencing sluggish growth, low commodity prices, particularly from developing countries, weak global trade and diminishing capital inflows, terrorism, drugs and human trafficking, piracy in the Gulf of Guinea and the impact of climate change. But we know that the stubborn spirit of optimism and hope with which you have reached this far will continue to aspire, inspire your action to keep the people of Ghana buoyant during your tenure. Ghana has always been an active member of the ECOWAS community, and we have no doubt that you will continue to assert Ghana's proactive participation in the activities of the community as we work toward the attainment of our goals. With you as the newest member, we encourage Ghana's continued commitment to the core programs of the sub-regional body, including the consolidation of sub-regional peace and security, the conclusion of negotiations and legal actions for the improvement of financial and economic stability in the community. I will be looking forward to hosting you and your delegation in Monrovia during the 51st Ordinary Summit of the Authority of ECOWAS Heads of State and Government to be convened in May of 2017. President Akufuado, once again, on behalf of the Authority of Heads of State and Government of ECOWAS, we congratulate you your Vice President, and the gallant people of Ghana. Let the ancient Ghana stand that stood more than a thousand years ago be now the modern Ghana and a shining star. Let the light shine even brighter 
Let me conclude by thanking the people of Ghana, sister African countries, and the international community who turned up in mass today to celebrate this truly momentous occasion. Long live Ghana. Long live ECOWAS. Long live Africa. I thank you. Her Excellency Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, President of the Republic of Liberia, representing ECOWAS. You are reminded that this place still remains the Chamber of Parliament with the Right Honorable Professor Mike Aaron Quay presiding. It's the inauguration of President Nanado Danko Ekufuado and Vice President Alhaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Your Excellency, on behalf of the House, I want to express my deepest appreciation for this excellent and most encouraging address. Honorable members, I shall now invite the special guest of honor for this occasion and President of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, his Excellency, Alassane Ouattara, to deliver a special message. First Lady Rebecca Akufuado, Your Excellency John Dramani Mahama, <coughs> my dear brother, former First Lady Lordina Mahama, Your Excellency's uh, Head of State, Honorable uh, Head of Government, Your Excellency Bawumi Muhammadu, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Her uh, Ladyship, the Chief Justice of uh, the Republic of Ghana, Honorable uh, Members of Parliament, Your Excellency, the Chairperson uh, of the African Union, Your Excellencies, uh, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Your Excellency, the President uh, of the ECOWAS Commission, Excellencies, uh, distinguished representatives of international organizations, distinguished guests, my dear brothers and sisters of Ghana, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, with uh, great pleasure that I rise uh, to speak uh, in this uh, mythical uh, square of the independence, full of symbols and history, not only for the people of Ghana, but also for all who love peace and justice. Indeed, the collective memory still remembers and will remember that it was here in 1961 that His Excellency, the late President Kwame Nkrumah, father of the independence of Ghana and pioneer of Pan-Africanism lit for the first time the eternal flame sending to the Ghanaian people and Africa a message of hope for a united Africa master of its own destiny. Your Excellency, Mr. Nana Akufo Addo, my dear brother, Excellencies, uh, Head of State, distinguished guests. This solemn occasion gives me the pleasant opportunity to express on behalf of the Ivorian people, the government of Cote d'Ivoire and myself, 
to President Nana Akufo-Addo, my infinite gratitude for the gracious invitation that he kindly extended to me to take part in this ceremony as a special guest of honor. This uh, distinguished honor bestowed on me and from me to my country and my people reflects the exceptional quality of the strong relationship forged by history and geography which so happily exist between our two countries and our people. Your Excellency President Nana Akufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana. Your Excellency Baumia Mohamedou, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. I would like uh, to seize this opportunity to reiterate to both of you my warmest congratulations for your brilliant victory in the presidential election of December 7, 2016. Through this act, the people of Ghana have expressed their trust and confidence in you and shown their support for your vision and ambition for Ghana. Your well-known leadership, political commitment, and love for Ghana and Africa will enable you to successfully meet the legitimate aspirations of the brotherly people of Ghana. <clears throat> Your Excellency, my brother Nana Kufuado, Excellencies, uh, heads of states, distinguished guests. I would like to take uh, this opportunity to pay due tribute uh, to my brother, President John Dramani Mahama, for the outgoing president, and congratulate him on the remarkable and accomplished, accomplished a remarkable work accomplished during his tenure as uh, heads of state. President Mahama, as you leave uh, your position as uh, head of state of Ghana, I'm very pleased to acknowledge the very good collaboration we have had and which has enabled us to make significant progress in strengthening the economic and social cultural cooperation between our two countries. I'm particularly pleased for the work achieved together toward the consolidation of peace, security, and integration in our sub-region, as uh, indicated uh, shortly by uh, our chairperson of ECOWAS. In this regard, the people of the economic community of West African states will always be indebted to you for the important work you accomplished as president of ECOWAS during the period 2014-2015. Excellencies, head of states and government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the transparent and peaceful elections, as well as the smooth handover of power we are witnessing today, demonstrate that Ghana has definitely opted for democracy and peace. This election has undoubtedly contributed to reinforcing the positive image of West Africa and Africa to the world. I would therefore like to solemnly reiterate my admiration and pride to President Nana Akufo-Addo and John Dramani Mahama, both uh, great statesmen for their patriotism and through them to pay a vibrant homage to the people of Ghana for their political maturity, sense of discipline, and love for peace. I humbly exhort the people of Ghana to preserve these important ideas, which are the foundation for sustainable economic development. Indeed, without democracy, there is no peace. And without peace, there is no sustainable economic progress. Ghana, just like Cote d'Ivoire, aspires to economic emergence 
in the very near future. To meet this challenge and achieve this goal, Ghana needs a climate of peace and social cohesion. That is why I'm particularly pleased to appeal to the political leaders of this country, as well as to all the citizens of this great nation to firmly accompany and support President uh, Nana Akufuado during uh, his mission. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, over the years, Ghana has shown solidarity with Cote d'Ivoire on many occasions. Indeed, Ghana has welcomed for many years thousands of refugees from Cote d'Ivoire. In addition, Ghana has contributed a large contingent of troops to the United Nations operations in Cote d'Ivoire. I would like to once again take this opportunity to thank the political leaders of Ghana and the people, the good people of this great country for their support, assistance, and solidarity. The government and the people of Cote d'Ivoire will always be grateful to the Ghanaian people. As President Nana Akufo-Addo assumes uh, today the highest office in Ghana, I would like uh, to assure you of my firm commitment and total uh, availability to work with you to continue and further strengthen the privileged relationship between our two countries and our people. In this context, it will be my hope that you will, we will organize in the near future the 10th session of the joint of the Cote d'Ivoire-Ghana Joint Commission, which will be an opportune occasion to further intensify our bilateral 